Okay, so okay. welcome to the next show. Don't next show already. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't do oh, it like Joe. All about family, friends, football, and forex. And today okay. we have a returning guest, Mr. Rudolf Elma. Hi, Rudolf. How are you today? Uh, I'm so far so good. Uh, it's Monday morning, as usual. Monday takes a bit time to get into the swing, okay. but I'm on my way. <laughs> okay. I see you have your beautiful dog with you. So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Angel, and uh, uh, she's a Mauritian uh, watchdog. Uh, oh, Mauritian watchdog. Okay, okay. Yeah. very, very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, look, Rudolf, we had already a video session. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like two weeks ago. Correct. Yeah. And we have received very positive feedback, even from in, from international organizations. Okay. They were, they were very, very impressed, surprised at the same time about this weak whistleblower protection here in Switzerland for private. No whistleblower protection in Switzerland. Or Sorry. no whistleblower um, protection. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and also they found it very interesting what you said. That is also the reason why I wanted to follow up today yeah. with you. Uh, we had on the phone a, a quick chat, Finken file. Yes. It's now all over the world. They talk about thinking. Yes. Nobody really knows what it is. Yeah. So I thought you are the right expert to speak about it. What are the thinking files? What does it mean? Uh, basically, in simple terms, it's suspicious transaction reports uh, sent to US uh, government, uh, reported by, uh, by the banks. In simple terms, if they have a suspicion, a banker, uh, he files a suspicious transaction report. And that's it. Nothing more than that. Okay. Why does it come out right now in that uh, dimension? Uh, I don't really know, but uh, I assume uh, there is a lot of pressure on uh, society in general, civil society, and they want to know what's going on in the financial industry. Uh, and basically, at the end of the day, uh, we're talking about taxes to support uh, schools, uh, 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 civil society in general. And we, unfortunately, we have a um, part of our society doesn't do what they should do, pay taxes, uh, and uh, they don't do it. So I do think it's, it, it's uh, one of these reasons why it uh, came, it was made public this way. And uh, it should be, it should be. I mean, uh, uh, there's a big loss for society when the taxes are not uh, paid. I mean, uh, Trump, uh, Trump uh, is also uh, mm -hmm. with his tax declaration in the headlines. But now back to the Finken files. Yeah. Uh, does that mean through these transactions we effectively lose tax or how is it? Uh, it could well be, it's taxes, but it's not only about taxes, I mean it's about uh, uh, corruption money, it's about uh, crimes committed, uh, it's about bribing people, so it's, 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 uh, it's a big issue in, in my view, it's not only about taxes. Is definitely not. Okay. And how did it get public right now? What happened? Do you know? Uh, I mean, I looked it up a bit on the international investigation journalists, but uh, honest, honestly speaking, I couldn't find that much. Okay. Uh, but it's more about technique behind it. What's the purpose of these uh, suspicious transaction reports? And uh, the purpose obviously is, from a banker's point of view, uh, you want to have uh, protection because if you come across a transaction which appears to be suspicious, obviously appears to be, I mean, as a matter of fact, as a good bank, you precisely know what's the purpose of the payment. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, you know the client, you know the client's profile. We're not talking yeah. about uh, Mr. Uh, X, Y, Z, uh, the man in the street. We're, talk we're talking about big boys, huh? yeah. uh, moving millions around. So uh, you do know uh, what the purpose behind the transaction is. But uh, from a legal point of view, uh, you simply file that uh, suspicious transaction report, and then you can say if you go, if you have to go to court, 
I did what I need to do. So I'm, I did my very best. I'm, I'm as, oh, it's simply a matter to excuse yourself or protect yourself in a court case. As a matter of fact, yeah. it is, it is uh, uh, what's happening is the transaction is executed under normal circumstances. Even so, it's known that uh, the transaction should be paid back to the source where the money came from, yeah. but usually it's executed. And uh, once the transaction went through, I mean, I can explain that on a trust, for instance, a trust concept. Yeah. Uh, if the transaction is through, the, the deal is done, the money is there where it should be and can move on. Now with trust, for instance, you have in a trust the so-called uh, uh, free clause. Free clause means in the trust deed what uh, uh, it means that you can move the trust, let's say a Cayman trust, within hours, within hours from Cayman to Jersey UK or in the British Virgin Islands or to the Bahamas. Now if such a transaction financial transaction went through and went into that trust. Uh, now, the authorities came across this, uh, let's say, suspicious transaction report, and they go into details. I mean, the authorities in the Cayman Islands would say, if you come with an international request for, for help, uh, then international assistance, it's called, request, uh, then uh, they say in Cayman, we don't have that trust anymore here. Incredible. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. So, as a matter of fact, it's basically, if you talk about these suspicious transaction reports, call it this way, it's insurance for the banker, it's simply paperwork, it's not gonna make a big difference at all as long as authorities, authorities do, not, do not have the resources to act immediately when it is reported and the money is withheld with the bank. Okay, then um, question on that. Do you think the banks have a tendency to report more of these suspicious transactions as needed, that they protect themselves? Uh, or do you think they also reluctant to report to keep the business relation intact? You know, it's very difficult to say it in a, in a general way. Uh, but uh, my understanding on the banking world in this matter is that huge banks, or the big banks, they actually would report more because there are just more people within the organization who know about the transaction. In a smaller bank, uh, I say, oh, it's not that we can take that risk, uh, that's it. So it's, it's, the, it's the concept, you know, it's the concept of, uh, the way criminals work, they are trying to go to big banks first, and if they can't place the money or the transactions, they go to the smaller bank down the road, and there, I mean, a smaller bank has to fight for survival, and if it has to survive, it's basically uh, in a position to take more risk than usual. Okay. Last That's question, yeah. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Last question on that. Now, what do you think is the next step now? Now it's in the media, the thinking funds, is there any follow-up, do you think, from the reg regulatory authorities or from the governments or even from the state attorneys like the Staatsanwalt or do you think it's just publicity right now? Uh, generally speaking, I would say it's just publicity. There might be a few uh, cases which are going to be investigated, but in general it's publicity uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we talk about it in four or five months later on, uh, it's gone. Even so, it would be a big and great opportunity if you have the resources to analyze those transactions because really the issue is to find out what's really the purpose behind those transactions. Yeah, I understand. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, actually should be the purpose of yeah. this reporting of Correct. suspicious transactions to yeah. find out why and what. Anti-money laundering is a yeah. big, big word on that uh, topic. Absolutely, I yeah. mean, that's, that's an issue. It's about, uh, uh, 
about money laundering as such, I mean, when you know the purpose of it, then you're going to find out maybe you know who is the owner of the account because we have this know your client yeah. uh, issue uh, as well as you know the source of funds. But at the end of the day, and uh, if 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 the client is let's say a British Virgin Island company who uh, has bear shares, bear shares. Uh, then you don't really know uh, who owns uh, the company, who is really behind that organization. Yes, yes. I mean, for instance, I had a uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian uh, uh, ultra rich person, and basically what that person did, uh, he owned a big uh, organization that the bear shares were hidden in his helicopter in the sea just to make sure that nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the game. I mean, uh, that's the game it's played uh, or, or, and, uh, for, uh, for the organization of the company, this uh, British Virgin Island company had no knees and I was a lawyer. His name didn't appear anywhere on, in the entire organization related to this offshore business. Onshore it's different, but offshore is yeah. another way. Wow, okay. So uh, I think there is a lot more to come on these Finken files and on these uh, topics, if it solves the issue and uh, yeah. is, is another story. But thank you very much, uh, Rudolf, for your good insights. As yeah, you're you welcome. Highly appreciate it. You're welcome. And then <laughs> we, we will speak each other, see each other soon. Okay. Right. okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.